Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Pluctus channel. The United States military has led the world in the use of unmanned aerial vehicles, or drones, for several decades. The U.S. government first started investigating the use of pilotless aircraft in the early 1990s. Though the initial concept focused on reconnaissance and information gathering, modern drones are now capable of everything from surveillance to targeting to all-out military offensives. Just before the turn of the century, aviation contractor Northrop Grumman introduced the RQ-4 Global Hawk. Designed to fly at high altitudes for extended periods, the unmanned RQ-4 was the first drone capable of providing continuous coverage of a large area using an array of sophisticated sensors. Initially, it was intended and used for reconnaissance and surveillance missions. However, as time passed, the Global Hawk began to see use in civilian applications, including monitoring weather patterns and tracking wildfires. Okay, I have us on a heading of uh, 204. The RQ-4 is controlled by three remote operators, two pilots and a third person to operate the sensor equipment. One by artillery piece, one packed. Delta Romeo 2. Though only 47 feet long, the plane has a wingspan of more than 130 feet. This allows it to use far less power and move at slower speeds, facilitating information and data gathering. The aircraft is powered by a single Rolls-Royce turbofan engine, which produces around 7,600 pounds of thrust. Though it can reach altitudes of 60,000 feet, its speed is limited to around 390 miles per hour. As a surveillance drone, the RQ-4's designers focused on how long the aircraft could stay in the air. Ultimately, the final design had a range of more than 14,000 miles and a flight endurance of over 34 hours. To ensure the plane can maintain these incredible capabilities, each RQ-4 undergoes regular maintenance, as well as pre- and post-flight inspections. As no pilot is on board to identify potential problems, Ground crews must ensure the drone and its systems do not suffer any damage or undue wear while on a mission. Supporting the warfighter on the ground is absolutely our number one priority. Any mission that we can conduct to support them and keep them safe on the ground is fundamental to what we do. Since Global Hawks have such a long range and flying time, it often takes multiple teams of pilots in order to conduct a given operation. Delta one, clear. As a launch recovery pilot, we'll actually take the aircraft off, get it into safe airspace for the mission control element to take over and conduct the mission. 
In 2011, the RQ-4 was retired in favor of the upgraded RQ-4B variant, also known as Block 20. The B model featured a larger wingspan, higher operating altitude, and improved sensors and communication equipment compared to the RQ-4A. It also boasted increased engine power, which allowed it to carry more payload and fly for longer periods. In later years, even more variations of the RQ would be released, including the Phoenix model for NATO ground surveillance, the Eurohawk, and the Triton, which was envisioned as a maritime operations drone. When airframes are switched out in this manner, the process is referred to as a rollover. It takes a lot of effort on behalf of pilots, maintenance crews, and sensor operations. They must familiarize themselves with the aircraft's new systems and capabilities while watching an aircraft they'd work closely with be retired. Even before the RQ-4 became renowned for its surveillance capabilities and extensive range, the United States was investing in drones that could assist in combat missions. In 1995, this research culminated in the General Atomics MQ-1 Predator. The Predator is a medium-altitude, long-endurance UAV that can be flown remotely by a pilot, sensor operator, and intelligence analyst on the ground. Like the RQ-4, the Predator is equipped with various sensors, including a video camera, infrared camera, and radar. These systems allow it to gather intelligence and track targets in real time, all without putting any of its crew in danger. Also, like the Global Hawk, the Predator can stay aloft for a long time thanks to its relatively short length and broad wingspan. In fact, it's estimated that the MQ-1 has a flight endurance of around 24 hours, despite its range being only a fraction of the RQ-4. The Predator was instrumental in several conflicts, providing the proof of concept the United States military needed to continue with the weaponized drone program. In 2007, General Atomics released a new, upgraded version known as the MQ-9 Reaper, or Predator-B. Though its mission would remain mostly the same, the MQ-9 differed from its predecessor in several important ways. For starters, the MQ-9 Reaper is larger, with a wingspan of 66 feet compared to the Predator's 55 feet. It also boasted a larger payload capacity which allowed it to carry more weapons and even allowed it to carry guided and unguided bombs. Are you 
As technology had improved dramatically in the time between the development of both drones, the Reaper had a more advanced sensor suite, including a synthetic aperture radar and a multispectral targeting system. Finally, the new engine nearly doubled the aircraft's range, though it did reduce the endurance to around 14 hours. The Reaper program has proven so successful over the years that the aircraft began being used for a much wider variety of programs. For instance, Reapers have been used alongside smaller drones to conduct counts of endangered wildlife and to provide information on damage from earthquakes and wildfires. Reapers have also conducted search and rescue operations and aided customs and border protection in helping maintain America's land and sea borders. As with any sort of military technology, drone weapons were soon met with advancements in anti-drone technology. These are systems designed to detect, track, and neutralize unmanned aerial vehicles that might pose a threat to military personnel, equipment, and installations. Some countries have developed specialized weapons that simply jam the drone or disable its navigation. As early as 1967, the United States military was equipping its troops with the FIM-92 Stinger missile system. This man-portable air defense weapon operates an infrared homing surface-to-air missile that can be fired off the shoulder. Lightweight enough to be carried on foot or mounted on vehicles, the Stinger packs a high explosive fragmentation warhead that can destroy or disable low-flying enemy aircraft, including planes, helicopters, and drones. Given that the weapon has been in use for over four decades, the Stinger has undergone a number of upgrades over the years. It currently boasts a range of five miles and can engage targets at altitudes of up to 12,500 feet. A more recent approach to the drone problem includes using directed energy weapons or DEWs. These weapons use energy in the form of lasers, microwaves, or particle beams to attack a target. Unlike conventional weapons, which rely on the kinetic energy of projectiles, DEWs deliver energy in the form of a concentrated beam or pulse. They can be used to damage or destroy many different types of drones in the proper concentrations and with good accuracy. The main advantage of directed energy weapons is that they can deliver precise, immediate, and lethal force without needing ammunition. However, their effectiveness can be affected by factors such as weather conditions, distance, and the composition of the target material. As drones continue to become more and more widely used, no doubt the defense against them will also become more advanced.
That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.